We would like to know if this initial for you problem has to have just one unique solution. Sometimes when you are trying to solve a differential equation along with an initial for you, right, it's beneficial if you can tell how many solutions that you are going to possibly have, right? So right here, we are just looking for if we have a unique solution or not. Well, what we can do is we can use the existence and uniqueness zero for it first, okay? And that's the point of this video. I will show you guys a few more examples after this as well. But let me demonstrate how it works. So when I look at an initial value problem, this right here is a dy dx, which is already by itself. That means this right here is my function f of x, y, right? So let me write it down, and I will say this is x square root of y minus 3. And I have two things to check. First, if this function is continuous around this point, and you see it's written as y of 4 is equal to 3, this means we have the initial point at 4, comma 3. This is the x now, this is the y now, okay? We would like to know if this is continuous around 4, comma 3. If it is, that's the first check. So let's see. Can I plug in 4 into x? Yes, and it works. Can I plug in 3 into y? Yes, because 3 minus 3 is 0. Square root of 0 is good, right? So it still works. And you know, this is just x, which is continuous. Square root functions, when you have nice numbers inside, it is also continuous, right? So I will just say this right here it is continuous. So C-O-N-T stands for continuous, OK? And I would just like to use the word around, because technically, you have to say it's a rectangular region. But let me just use the word around. It is continuous around that initial point, 4, 3. So it satisfies my first check. And now, my second check is, I will do the partial of f with respect to y. So let me put this down, partial of f with respect to y. And let's figure out what that is first x will be considered a constant, so we will have that. And we have to take the derivative of square root of y minus 3 with respect to y. And the answer for that will be just 1 over 2 square root of y minus 3. And the derivative of inside with respect to y is just 1, so it doesn't really matter, right? So you can just put this down nicely. This is just x over 2 square root of y minus 3. OK. We will also have to check if this is continuous or not around this point. Well, I can plug in 4 into x. That's nice. However, if I plug in 3 for y right here, I will get what? 3 minus 3 will be 0. Square root of 0 is 0. 2 times 0 is 0. The 0 is at the wrong place, right? I cannot have 0 in the denominator. Unfortunately, when I plug in this point in here, it's not defined. It. Therefore, this is not continuous. And let me write down what I said earlier. When I plug in uh, 4 into x, we have 4 on the top, over 2 square root of y is 3 minus the 3, right? All in all, you get 4 over 0, which is not defined, right? This is no good. That means this right here is not, okay, it's not continuous around. 4, comma, 3. So unfortunately, the ex existence and uniqueness theorem fails. We cannot guarantee that this initial value problem has a unique solution. So the answer to this is no. The answer to this is no. And let me ask you guys this. Does it mean that we don't have a solution to this? No, it doesn't. Okay. Does it mean that we necessarily have to have two solutions to this? No, cannot guarantee that neither. Does that mean that we have three solutions or four solutions or whatever? I cannot guarantee that neither. All I can guarantee is that I cannot say this right here has a unique solution. But could I still have just one unique solution to this? Yes, it is possible. Okay. Yes, it might still be possible. But I just cannot tell you at the moment, so I cannot promise. Okay, that's why I put down the necessary. I just cannot promise you that this equation has a unique solution at the moment. Okay, and let me just convince you guys real quick that how many solutions this have. <laughs> let me just show you guys real quick. So now, I will just kind of uh, go through this. I will solve this. 
Um, I may still just end up with one solution. I don't know. I may end up with no solution. I may end up with three solutions. Who knows? And anyways, let's just get to work on this, okay? So to solve this, we can just uh, separate the variables. I will just multiply dx on both sides and divide the square root of y minus 3 on both sides, right? So it will look like 1 over this, which is square root of y minus 3. And we have the dy right here. And this is equal to x built here. And we multiply the dx right here. So that's what we have, OK? And now we can just integrate both sides. Integral of 1 over square root of y minus 3. You can just do some use substitution, whatever you want. Just integrate this, you will end up with 2 square root of y minus 3. And you don't need to worry about the plus c, OK? Just worry about that uh, on the right-hand side. And integrate this, you get x squared over 2 and then plus c. So this is what we have. We integrated both sides already. And let me plug in the initial values right here so I can solve for c right away. And let me just put down 4 for x and then 3 for y. So this is going to be 2 times the square root of y is 3 minus this 3. And then we have this is equal to 4 for x. So we have 4 squared over 2 plus c. On the left-hand side, all in all, you will get 0. On the right-hand side, 4 squared is 16, divided by 2 is 8, and then plus c. So altogether, you see that c has to be negative 8. OK? And we have a solution. And I'll just write this down right here. <laughs> we have 2 square root of y minus 3. It's equal to x squared over 2, and the c that we found out, which is negative 8. That's what we have. And usually, whenever possible, we want to isolate the y. So we'll do that real quick right here, OK? So let's multiply everything by 1 half throughout this equation. So that way, this and that will cancel. And then you'll just go ahead and do that, right? <laughs> so here we have square root of y minus 3. But uh, technically, I shouldn't cross this out because I still have to use the 1 half. Multiply with this, so I will get x squared over 4. and then. I will uh, multiply the 1 half with a negative 8, so I get negative 4, right? And then I will square both sides, cancel this out. We will have y minus 3 equals to this. x squared over 4 minus 4 and then square. Finally, I ask you on both sides, so I will have y uh, is equal to this. x squared over 4 minus 4 squared plus 3. And you see, this is the solution to that, no problem, right? So we solve the differential equation by separate the variable, and we solve for the c already. So this is, of course, an answer to that, no problem yet. However, I will just tell you guys, this is more of the, uh, the good answer that we want to find, because this is the interesting one. It's actually a function. It changes and things like that. So right here, I'll box this just to uh, show you this is the one that we like. However, we do have a missing solution. OK, missing solution right here. And what I mean by a missing solution is that um, it's not belong to this kind of um, equation. OK, it's usually a constant solution. Because this, as you can see, um, is a polynomial equation. But we also have a missing solution. This is y as a function of x, OK, so I'll put down identically equal to constant 3. This will always work, OK? This is also a solution to it. And the reason I write three lines is because I mean to say y is a function of x, and it's always equal to 3 for all the value of x, OK? So in fact, we have one answer, two answers, and they look totally different. Because this right here is a polynomial, this is just a constant. What do I mean by that? Let me just show you guys real quick. Okay, Let me just show you guys real quick. So I will write this down. This is the same as saying y as a function of x is equal to 3 for all x. Okay. So I will also say that y of x is 3 is also a solution. Okay. And the reason why is because if you have this as the function, I will have to get the derivative, right? So you see that dy 
dx, this is equal to 0 because I differentiate that, I get 0, isn't it? And now, I will plug in 3 into this y as the function, and I will plug in 0 into the derivative. You will see 0 here, and this is equal to, we have the x in the front, and we have the square root, and we plug in the function, this is the constant function, the 3, okay? I plug in 3 inside, minus that 3. And you see that this is, of course, still 0. 3 minus 3 is 0, and it's always 0, because this is a constant function. And then x times this 0 is, of course, still 0, so it checks. And you see, when I have y of x is equal to 3 for all x, of course, y of 4 will be 3 as well. So, this is what I mean by, okay, yes, I have a solution to it. But sometimes, if you cannot guarantee to have a unique solution, we better check if there's anything that's missing. And in fact, we do have a missing solution right here. And let me tell you, these are the only two that we have for this initial value, okay? So, hopefully, you guys see what's going on right here, and I'll do a few more examples for you guys, so that way you will see how the uniqueness and existence theorem works.